Hey everybody, today I'm in Dallesville, South Carolina, which is near Stateburg, South Carolina, which is in Sumter County, South Carolina. And today we're gonna to be exploring the grave site of General Thomas Sumter. So if you know anything about him, he is known as the Fighting Gamecock. And I'm gonna give you a little bit more details about him in a second. So mom's in the car, doing it by myself. But anyway, you ready? Yeah, let's go. It says General Thomas Sumter, monument to General Sumter stands 500 yards south. Born August 14, 1784 in Hanover County, Virginia, he was a frontiersman and Indian fighter. Coming to South Carolina by 1764, he became a planner as partisan, he'll be partisan, leader and later brigadier general of state troops. He harried the British in the revolution. He served in U.S. House and Senate and died at South Mont, June 1st, 1832. And that says monument to General Sumter was erected by General Assembly of South Carolina and unveiled August 14, 1907. At ceremonies attended by Sumter Guards of Charleston, 300 U.S. regulars, 1st Artillery Band and Sumter Light Infantry, with address by Honorable Henry A. Middleton Smith, Chairman of Commission and Moving Spirit in erection of this monument was Colonel John J. Jargon, Dargan, of Stateburg. So this is where the tomb is. It's absolutely beautiful back here. It's in a residential neighborhood, so it's not exactly where you would think that it would be. So this says Thomas Sumter, symbol of South Carolina resistance. Enchanted with the splendor of victory, he, Thomas Sumner, would wade in torrents of blood to attain it. And that's a quote by Colonel Henry Light Horse Harry Lee. So it says, the land on which you now stand here in the high hills of Santee once belonged to General Thomas Sumner. Today, only the graves of Sumner and many of his descendants remain here as a vestige of his residence. Most famous for his exploits during the American Revolutionary War from 1775 to 1783, Sumter contributed greatly to the ultimate defeat of British forces in South Carolina. Sumter distinguished himself most notably in 1780 after the British captured Charleston and then marched into the Carolina backcountry. Many patriots disheartened by a series of British victories laid down their weapons, but not Thomas Sumter, earning the nickname the Fighting Gamecock. He organized a partisan band of guerrilla fighters who so harassed the king's troops that British General Lord Cornwallis considered Sumter his greatest plague. Sumter, who preferred the freedom of independent command, sometimes disregarded the orders of his superiors and clashed with fellow officers. Nevertheless, the Gamecock kept the spirit of revolution alive in South Carolina at a critical time, having outlived every other Revolutionary War general. He died in 1832 at the remarkable age of 98. In 1907, the South Carolina General Assembly honors Sumter's service and sacrifice by erecting the granite monument that stands in the cemetery before you. And it says, between July 1780 and July 1781, General Sumter struggled with British forces in six important engagements, keeping the cause of independence alive after the fall of Charleston. And this says, Born on the Virginia frontier in 1734, Sumter's military career spanned the French and Indian War, which was 1756 to 1763, 
and the American Revolution, plagued by financial troubles in Virginia, Sumter came to South Carolina in 1763 in search of a new economic opportunity. He opened a store near Nelson's Ferry on the Santee River and went on to become one of the most prominent merchants and planters in the backcountry. And the portrait is courtesy of the National Park Service Independence National Historic Park. So that is him right there. He's got a fall on his face right this second. So he was very relentless. So I guess he would be the original BA, as they call him. And that's an A team reference there, if you get what I'm saying. So it's like some birds have gotten in there on the cross. And this says Natalie Marie Louise Stephanie Beatrix de Delage de Baldu, beloved wife of Thomas Sumter Jr., born in France October 28, 1782, died in Stateburg August 10, 1841. She had a very long name. But anyway, read you a little bit of information from wikipedia.com. It says Thomas Sumter was born August 14, 1734, and he died June 1, 1832. And he was a soldier in the colony of Virginia militia, a brigadier general in the South Carolina militia during the American Revolution. He was also a planner and a politician. After the United States gained independence, he was elected to the United States House of Representatives and to the United States Senate, where he served from 1801 to 1810. When he retired, Sumter was nicknamed the Fighting Gamecock for his fierce fighting style against British soldiers after they burned down his house during the Revolution. So this man says, do not mess with me, do not mess with my house because I'm coming for you. It says his father was named William, and he was a miller and former indentured servant, while his mother, Patience, was a midwife. And most of Thomas Sumter's early years were spent tending livestock and helping his father at the mill, not in school. This says, he came to South Carolina about 1760 and was in the Indian service on the frontier for several years before settling as a planner in this virginity, commanded 6th Regiment South Carolina Line Continental Establishment, 1776-1778, Brigadier General, SC Militia, 1780-1782, Member of Continental Congress from 1783 to 1784. Member of U.S. Congress from 1789 to 1793. 1797 to 1801. And he was a U.S. Senator from 1801 to 1810. Let me see what this says. Erected by the General Assembly of South Carolina, 1907. And this says, this stone marks the grave of one of South Carolina's most distinguished citizens, Thomas Sumner, one of the founders of the Republic, born in Virginia, August 14, 1734, died June 1, 1832. And that says, to General Thomas Sumter, who fought so gloriously for the liberty of the United States in remembrance of his two grandsons, Charles and Eating de Fonte, who fought so heroically and died so nobly for the liberty of France in 1916. 
That's very pretty. And I love that the game cocks there. And this is in honor of Revolutionary War hero General Thomas Sumner. July 14, 1734 to June 1st, 1832. Placed by Sumner's home chapter, Daughters of the American Revolution. And that says, Tanto Nomini Nubum Par Eloquum. And I'm probably not pronouncing that stuff right, but we know how to pronounce things. And that says, In Memorandum of Thomas Sumter, son of J.W. and P.D. Brownfield. Francis Henry. And that's Pauline Brasilia. It's Julia. That's Blanche Caroline Brownfield. That's Robert James Brownfield. And this is Francis Louise Sumter, born May 13th, 1815, died July 31st, 1866. That's Paul Thomas DeLodge Sumter, born November 14th, 1809, died July 8th, 1874. Anna Wadi's Summer, Sumter, April 15th, 1850 to August 1st, 1850. So that was just a baby. Maybe Wathis Sumter. That was really hard to read there. Elizabeth Wadi Sumter. So these might have all been children that died as soon as they were born, almost, it looks like. Or they didn't live very long. And that's Thomas Sumter Jr. And he was born August 30th, 1768. And died June 15th, 1840. And that's for General Thomas Sumter, born 1734, died 1832. And this is for Mary Kenny. She was the beloved wife of General Thomas Sumter, born 1723, and died 1817. have a few benches out here where you can sit if you would like to whenever you visit they have a huge parking lot as you can tell this one's talking about the general Sumter memorial academy from 1905 to 1911 this forerunner of the modern consolidated rural high school with Colonel John Julius Dargan, noted educator as founder and principal, offered classes in agriculture, home economics, and music. Day students from four districts were transported by mule drone covered wagons.
So the glare is bad on this side. But it says Acton built in 1803 on this site by the Knotch family house, the academy, from 1905 to until 1911 when the building burned. In 1908, the U.S. Department of Agriculture established one of the earliest school demonstration farms here. J. Frank Williams, agriculture teacher, later became the first Sumter County farm agent. So I hope you enjoyed this little look at the Thomas Sumter burial site. One day, hopefully, we can go to where his namesake is, which is Fort Sumter, down there in Charleston. But I got to wait till it gets a little bit cooler for that because it's a little hot out there right now to be in the middle of the water and only in the water. So that's a future thing that we're going to do. So, but anyway, if you did watch, I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.